Hello, hello, brothers and sisters out there. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Uh, Sister Monica King, I see your hand caught down there. Your joint hand caught. How you doing, sisters? Come on in, brothers. Come on in, sisters. We got a good topic tonight. Yes, yes, and this topic is going to be very informative and it's going to be very enlightening. I guarantee you, you're going to get something out of this content tonight. So come on in, brothers. Come on in, sisters, to get some of this good content tonight. We're going to allow a few more people to come in so we can get to this good show tonight. I've been looking forward all day to get to this particular topic. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And I know that you're ready, brother. And I know that you're ready, sister, for me to get into this content tonight. A few more uh, minutes. Well, not a few more minutes. A few more seconds. And we're going to get into this content tonight. By the way, brother, so how you doing? I hope that you all are doing well. Come on in. Don't sit at the back. Close to the door. I want you all to come close to the front. You brothers and sisters come together. Come sit at the front so we can get into this good content tonight. I want you to hold on to your seats because we're going to get deep tonight. Some of you all saying how deep can you get? We are going to get deep tonight on this particular topic. So I hope that you have a little time, my brother and sister. You're going to be enlightened tonight. Some of this stuff that I'm going to be talking about tonight, some of you may not be aware of it, but I'm going to bring it to the forefront. I'm going to bring it to your attention. So get ready. We are about to roll tonight on this particular topic. The music is about to fade out and we are going to jump on it. Well, well, well. How you doing, brothers? And how you doing, sisters out there? How you doing? How you doing, Deborah uh, D. Scott? I see you join Hancock down there. How you doing, sister? How you doing? Come on in, brothers. Come on in, sister. We got a good con a good content show tonight. It's going to be very, very deep. And you want to know how deep the bunny hole go? If you read the book of Alice in Wonderland, this is going to go a little deep tonight. I guarantee you. For those of you that are wondering who I am, if this is your first time looking at this broadcast, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Tony M. Toomer, and I talk about relationships. I talk about relationships of that of a man and a woman that should be serious. The serious should move towards the commitment, verbally commit so that man and woman can know the position of the relationship, and it should cross that third hurdle, meaning a covenant relationship. As you know, my brother and sister, I say this all the time. God do not want a man and woman to go halfway when it comes to a relationship. God wants you to go all the way. God don't like, to, like for you to stay in a, a situation about, when I say situation, he don't want you to be boyfriend and girlfriend forever. He really frowned on if you're just living together, playing house. No, God want a bona fide relationship. He want that man and want to be serious. He want that man and want to be committed. And he want that man and want to be covenant. What does covenant mean? Marry. God don't want no man and woman playing around when it comes to a relationship. How you doing, mother? For those of you that are coming in tonight, also uh, know this. That I specifically talk about the relationship between a man and a woman from a biblical perspective. When you look in the book of Genesis, God started uh, the human relationship off with a man and a woman, a male and a female. God created both of them in his image and his likeness. He did not start the world off with two men. He did not start the world off with two women. He started off with a male and a female. So that's the position where I'm coming from. If you don't like the position where I'm coming from, my brother and sister, you have what is called a free will. You can do whatever you choose to do. However, if you're looking at this particular broadcast, I'm talking from a biblical standpoint, how God made it man and woman. And with that said, we're about to get into tonight's topic. Tonight's topic is breaking news. God didn't put all marriages together. 
Again, this is breaking news. This is not CNN. God put all God didn't put all marriage together. Breaking news. This is not Fox. God did not put all marriages together. No matter what you see out there, my brothers, no matter what you see out there, my sisters, there are a lot of men and women that get married. How you doing, Sister Brenda Lester? But does that mean God placed that man and woman together? We about to jump on it. But first of all, I got some reading that I'm going to do, my brother and sister, tonight. Because it's some information that I had to just put down. I'm going to read some stuff, then I'm going to look at you, and then I'm going to expound on what I'm talking about. Not explain, but I'm going to expound on it. First of all, we're going to go to the dictionary, my brother and sister, and then we're going to find out what the word, the word marriage means. How you doing, Sister Brother Lester? What does the word marriage mean? Let's look at it from a dictionary standpoint. The dictionary clearly states that marriage is defined as, from the dictionary, uh, how you doing, Sister Flo Hartmart? They say, the legal or formally recognized union of two people as partners in a personal relationship. Historically, again, historically, and in some jurisdiction, it specifically talk about the relationship or the union between a man and a woman. That's historically from God's point of view. But we know that it's not like that in today's world. But from historically and from God, how God really wanted it to be, he wanted to be male and female. Now the question, my brother, and the question, my sister, is for the married brothers and sisters, did you really meet? How you doing, Sister Sherry E. Smith? My married brother and sister, did you really meet? Did you really get married based on how God wanted you to get married? Now, as it is written in Genesis 2.22, that Genesis 2.22, Genesis 2.22, it clearly states in God's word, and I want you all to be on board with me tonight because I'm going to have to go to God's word to build, to build this house on what I'm talking about. And so if you want to disagree with me or whatever, you could disagree with me all you want, but I'm going to God's word and then I'm going to bring it out to you. Okay. Now going back to Genesis 2.22, it said, then the Lord God made a woman from the real. It did not say God, it did not say God made a man. It said God created a man. You understand that God created a man. But then it said God made a woman from the rib that he had taken out of the man. And he brought her to the man. God brought the woman to the man. God brought the woman to the man. God brought the woman to a man. The man, Adam. That's how God brings orchestrates relationships. And I'm going to break down how God does it. God still does it the same way, but he, he set up the circumstances. And we're going to get to it. How you doing, my little sister Renee? Now, for example, when you ask, now check this out, my, my brother and sister. When you ask the average man and woman, how did they meet? What would they normally say? They would say that they, they met through chance. They would say they made they met through luck. They would say that someone set them up. They would say that I went somewhere and we bumped into one another. We met on social media. They'll come up with all these kind of things. Now check it out. I'm talking about the average married couple. If you listen to them, and after tonight's show, those of you that know married people, just quiz them and see, and you and you're gonna see that what I'm talking about is true. And it's legit. They're going to tell you every way they met. But the average man, husband, and the average woman, wife, is not going to uh, say that God set up the stage for them to get married. They're not going to say that majority of people, and majority of people, they will tell you 
even when they get married, how do you how you kept your marriage together? Most men and most women, even those that when you in worship serving and they said this couple been together 50 years and people just be clapping. After everybody be clapping, I'm telling you this, my brother and sister, you go ask the average man and woman that been married even 50 years, you don't even got to go to no worship service. If you know somebody that been married for X amount of years, let's say from one year on up from one year, you ask them, I guarantee you most couple will not say God put us together. And you'll say, you'll say brother Tony was telling the truth. He was he was right on it. Most of them are not going to say God put us together. And then on the and then you ask them, how did you stay together? Rarely would a couple say God keep us together. What they would say is good communications. That's what the average couple will say. Good communication minus God. You see, good communication, my brother and sister, it is a byproduct of a relationship with God. They will not give God the credit at all. It's something that the husband did and the wife did to keep it together. They're going to tell you what they did to keep the relationship going. They're going to tell you how they started, how they maintained their relationship. I'm, I'm telling you, the average couple, God did not put it together. If, they, if God put them together, they will acknowledge God put them together. You see, if you have a relationship with God, brother, if you have a relationship with God, sister, you will include him. Because when it comes to a relationship between a man and a woman, it is not two, it's three. It's God, man, God, woman, God, man, and woman together. That's a relationship. It's bigger than husband and wife. Most married couples do not understand the triangle. The triangle is God at the top, the man here, the woman here, and they bonded together in a triangle because God is all in all. And I'm going to get down to that a little later. As it is written in Matthew 19, 4 through 6, Matthew 19, 4 through 6, Matthew 19, 4 through 6, and these words, my brother and sister, came directly out of the lips of the Lord Jesus, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. His last name was not Christ. He is Jesus the Christ. Okay? Jesus said this when he was when some uh people were questioning Jesus about the relationship between a man and woman. This is what Jesus said. Listen to me carefully. Jesus said, Have you have you not written, I mean read, Jesus replied, this is what he said, that at the beginning, Jesus said, at the beginning, the creator, now I want you all to remember that word creator, I'm going, I'm going to come back to that, okay? Remember the word creator. Jesus said, at the beginning, the creator made them male and female. So Jesus went back to the origin, what Jesus would talk about back in the Garden of Eden. But to be very technical with you, my brother and sister, Adam and Eve existed in God's mind first. If you ask the average man and woman, where was Adam and Eve beginning? Their fleshly beginning was on earth because they made from the, the dust of the ground. Because you got to remember that, my brother and sister, man and woman is made out of what? Spirit, soul, and body. Notice I did not say body, soul, and spirit. I said spirit, soul, and body. You see, when it comes to the body, the man, Adam himself, he was created from the dust of the ground. You know that dirt that, dirt that you walk on, my brothers? You know that dirt that you walk on, my sister? That's you and that's me. We are living in a dirt house. That's right. Our skin is dirt. When you get, when you wash, when you wash off your butts and stuff like that in the shower, you're going to see something on your rag. You're going to see, you're going to say it's dirty. 
That's what you're going to say. What do you expect? Your body is made out of dirt. So you're going to see some dirt. That's your body. That's your outward part, my brother and sister. But Adam and Eve existed in God's mind first. I told you this is going to get deep tonight. It, they are existing in God's mind first. So when they exist in the God mind first, God created the uh He created the, uh, the earth and all the animals and everything. He made He created Adam after He had created everything. Everything was done when God created Adam, and then when He created the other Adam, which is the female Adam. So God made Adam. He made the female, the male version of Adam. And the female version of Adam. Now, some of you saying, Tony, how did God create? Uh, I thought the Bible said God created Adam and Eve. He did. But I'm getting a little deeper tonight, my brother and sister. When God created both Adam, and, well, when he created Adam and Eve, Eve was not named Eve originally. God, Adam called her woman. He gave her a title. He said woman. Adam said, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, I shall call her woman. He did not call her Eve. He said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, she's I'm gonna call her woman. You understand? After Adam and Eve messed up, that's when he called her name Eve. If you ask the average man and woman about Eve origin, they will say, God made Adam and Eve. And when I talk a lot about Adam and Eve, I say it so you all can really know what I'm talking about. But I told you I'm getting a little deep tonight, okay? So when Eve and Adam sinned against God, that's when Adam called uh, the woman Eve. When God talked to Adam and Eve originally, he talked to both of them as Adam. When he talked to them, he called them Adam. It was a female and a male. Because this is what it said. Jesus talking again at the beginning. The creator made them male and female. He didn't make two males. He didn't make two females. He said male and female. Jesus is doing the talking. And said for this reason. This is what Jesus said. And for this reason. A man will. Will. W-I-L-L will leave his father and mother and be united with his wife or cleave to his wife. So wherever that man living, he got to come from there. Wherever that woman living, she got to come from there because that man and woman, they are glued together. And the two shall become one flesh. I'm telling you, I'm getting deep tonight. When you see a man and a woman together, husband and wife, they're one flesh. But you will say, Tony, I see you and I see your wife, Cinderella. I'm going to break it down to you. Whenever you see Cinderella, you see me. You understand what I'm saying? Whenever you see her, you see me. Whenever you, whenever you see me, you see her. And then what y'all saying? No, I, I, you, you losing me, Tony. Uh, you losing me. It's two of you all. It's your wife and you. It's two. I can't too. I took math in school. I got an A in math. No, you see one flesh. You see Tony and Tequesa or Cinderella. You see one flesh. You remember, Jesus always said that me and the Father are one. Remember God was in heaven, per se, right? But what did Jesus tell uh, one of his disciples when they asked him about his origin? One of them asked him at a dinner, say, Show us the Father. If you all can remember this text, they said, Jesus, show us the Father. What did Jesus say? Have I not been so long with you? Jesus said, if you have seen me, 
you have seen the Father. Because Jesus and God was one. One times one always equal what? One. When you talk about God, you're talking about one. You've got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, but they're one. But it's different personalities. Just like if you see me and you see my wife, we're still one, but we got different personalities. But we're still one. Because when we got married, we became one flesh. And how did that happen? God brought us together. Now, God set up the situation for us to meet. That's my story. God set up the situation. And we met. Okay, we met. But it was not me. It was not her. We give credit to God for bringing us together. You're not going to, and you got, you're looking at an imperfect man and you're looking at an imperfect woman, but a perfect God brought us together. You understand? So I'm telling you, my brother and sister, you going to get some meat tonight. I'm not going to give you light bread. You going to get some meat tonight. Now, for this reason, man should leave his father and mother and unite to his wife and the two shall become one. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Jesus said that. Jesus said they are not longer two because if you're not married, you're not one. So if a man and a woman are dating, you are not one. If you're living together, you are not one. I know some people are going to get pissed off at me tonight. I'm sorry. But as you all know, I'm not here to give you no sugar. I'm here to put some salt. And I told you what salt does. Salt preserve, right? It, it preserves, it gives flavor, and it irritates. So I'm not here for you to like me. I'm here to tell you the truth so you can get some understanding, my brother and sister. The world don't understand. The world gets up and is in the matrix. The world lives in the matrix. It's a it's all day, every day, the same thing over and over again. But let's go on and see what else Jesus said. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. You understand? What God have joined together, let no one separate. Now, some people would say, okay. I have been, I have gotten a divorce or a man could initiate a divorce. A woman can initiate a divorce. Do you not realize my brother and sister, like I said, what's the name of the topic? God did not put our relation, marriage together. A lot of time when a man and woman get a divorce, a man and a woman did not include God in it. And I am a witness cause I have been divorced before. God did not do it. You know what? Who did it? Me. I did not go to God seeking, seeking his approval. I made my own decision. I didn't ask God about my wife. I married her for my reason. She married me for her reason. I'm not talking about Cinderella. I'm talking about in my past. I know I'm a witness that God did not put the marriage together. I made a decision. And by me making a decision, it went south. There are a lot of men and women to the, today, they're together, they didn't get no divorce. But God didn't put them together. So they are like a car that don't have no gas in it, but they're running on fumes. And you know what I talk about that? It's like on I-75 in Atlanta, on the interstate, and you wondering is some have someone car broke down or have uh someone ran out of gas and the traffic be slow and you just to a stop. That's how some relationships are. You on fumes, and that fumes could last for years. The real gasoline in the car would be uh Jesus. So if you were a car, my brother and sister, what gets you running? The the, the Lord is like gasoline. He gets, he gets you going. You understand? Now, remember what I said, creator, right? I said creator. Creator is defined as a person or thing that brings something into existence. You understand? Now, the question, who is the creator? 
Good question. Who is the creator? As it is written in Colossians 1, verse 15 through 17. Colossians chapter 1, 15, 15 through 17. Colossians chapter 1, 15 through 17. We are about to find out who the creator is. Remember, God is the creator. Okay, God is. Remember, God is one. But there are three personalities in the God here, but they're still one. Now, it say, the Son is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn over all creation. There it is right there. It said the Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over creation. Now check this out about Jesus. We're talking about Jesus, the Son. It say, for in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible what you see and invisible what you don't see. You don't see the spiritual world. Where, where the throne or power or ruler or authority, all things have been created through him and for him. Everything that you can see and touch, everything that whatever comes to your mind, everything was created through him. Everything went through Jesus, the middle man, and everything was created for him. You understand? It was created for, he was before all things. This is what the Bible said. He was before all things and in him all things hold together. So what did that mean? Some people think that Jesus did not have no existence until Mary had him. No. Qu quiz, question. Who is the same age as the daddy and older than the mama? Again, who is the same age as their daddy and older than their mom? Not but one person at Jesus. Jesus is timeless. Him and God, timeless. Jesus created Mary. Can you, brother, you still to say that you created your mom and daddy? No. Jesus created Mary. And then he was, then she got pregnant through the spirit. When you go to the book of Genesis, when, uh, when uh, God talked to the serpent, God said there's going to be uh, some issues between your seed and her seed. Women don't have seeds. Women have eggs. There's not one woman that produced a seed. A seed is a sperm. But the Bible says her seed and thou seed. That's when God was talking to Satan. Okay? What is the woman's seed? Remember, Eve, uh, I'm not Eve, but Mary was never touched by a man prior to, uh, when Joseph touched Mary, that was after Jesus. Mary was impregnant by, she was overshadowed by the spirit. That's what it mean by her seed. Because women have eggs. You produce eggs when you have your ministry. You know that ministration, it, wa it washed away that egg that was not used. That's part of your ministration. For some of you brothers, you, you just think a woman have a period and she just ble be bleeding. No, it's, it got, it's part of flushing out that egg that's not going to be used and it cleans, you know, and she also being cleansed during that time. But I know some of you brothers think it's nasty and stuff like that. How you doing, Sister Pat, uh, Patton? Now, Jesus is here, and it said that all things, he was before all things, and in him all things held together. Now, since Jesus is the creator, and he created everything, Jesus make the rules what he deems or approve when it comes to life, and especially marriage. Jesus called the shots on what a marriage is. Jesus endorsed what a marriage is. You understand? There are some marriages, my brothers. There are some marriages, my sister, that look real good. They look good in public. They look good on pictures. 
They look good on social media. You will call them the power couple. They ain't got no power. They ain't got no power unless Jesus is in the mix. But they look good on the outside, don't they? They look good. He handsome. She's beautiful. But they would look more beautiful if the Lord was in them and people could see it. Because if Jesus was in the relationship, not only does the couple that may look good on the outside, but you would be able to say, it's something particular about that man and that woman. They both imperfect, but it's something about them. What is it will make them shine? You see, a man and a woman that have a relationship with God, they're going to shine, and they're going to shine without Vaseline all over their face. They're going to shine from outside, and they're going to, flip, they're going to be radiated on the outside. Called Jesus in that relationship. Jesus is not in every man and woman's relationship. You, my brother, and you, my sister, are looking at a lot of, of corpse walking around. You looking at dead men and dead women walking around. You looking at the walking dead. They're the walking dead because Jesus is not in a relationship, because he didn't put it together. He allowed them to make a decision. So a lot of decision that you see a man and woman make, they made a decision based on what you bring to the table, what I bring to the table and what you bring to the table. Now, these particular couple that you think look real good in public, because it look like they got the glamorous life, right? Don't get fooled by the glamorous life, my brother and sister. They put themselves together by getting married with a marriage license or common law. When we talk about the United States, there are nine states that uh, view a marriage by common law. We're talking about the court system. We're not talking about Jesus system. We're talking about the court system. These Some of these individuals, they will have the big church weddings. Come and see us. We shining. We're shining, but God ain't there. We're going to go through the motion like God is in a relationship. They just go, a lot of them, they go have these big fans. Don't get me wrong. Ain't nothing wrong with spending your money. You spend it how you want to. But a lot of them, they want to put on this big show, right? But God is not there. They will put all that money on a big fiesta or a scrabaganza and instead of using a lot of that money and put a down payment on a house and got a bill left over because they're trying to impress people instead of trying to impress God. So they have some of these, they'll go through these big uh, fancy weddings. God is not there. They will have a private wedding with family and friends, but God is not there. They would take beautiful beach pictures, but God is not there. They could even go down to the local courthouse. God is not there. But God did not put them together. I will get more to that later, okay? Now, again, those of you that are coming in, tonight's topic is breaking news. God did not put our marriages together. I'm going to talk to you sisters first. And then I'm secondly, I'm going to talk to you brothers, okay? Like I said, sisters, listen to me. A lot of you single sisters, listen to me, you single sisters. Just because you aren't married, but you desire to be married, and one of your peers or someone you know is getting married or is already married, doesn't mean that God put them together. That's right, Sister Chang Chang. You understand this, sister? Your peer might get married. I mean, about to get married or get or already married. Don't feel jealous and don't feel envious. They just going through the motion. Majority of them, they're going through the motion. They look good in front of you, but God is not there. The walking dead. Yes, they could talk. Yes, they could laugh. Yes, they could do a lot of things, but they're dead because God is not there. 
If you you look at the program Walking Dead, my brother, sister, when you look at on TV, you see these corpses walking around, right? They can move, they can hear and everything. They can even eat. But they're dead. A lot of a lot of marriages, brothers and sisters, they don't have the spirit of the Lord in them, so they're spiritually dead. You understand? Going back to uh, Adam and Eve, God told Adam, he said, in the day that you eat of that fruit, and you all know what I'm talking about, and I'm going to tell you this again, the fruit God was talking about, it doesn't say it was an apple. It just said the forbidden fruit. God said, in the day that you eat it, you shall surely die. We know that Adam lived 900 some years after he had ate the fruit. God said, in the day that you eat it, you shall surely die. So some of you saying, okay, Tony, God said you should surely die. And you just said that Adam lived 900 and some years after he ate the fruit. Yes, yes, yes. Adam died spiritually when he ate it. He was disconnected from God. He died spiritual first, but he was still moving around. You got to understand, Adam was perfect first. He had perfect fellowship with the Lord. He was balanced. He was balanced spiritually. He was balanced with his soul between him and his wife, Eve, and physical. He was complete. Number seven, he was complete. Number seven means complete, by the way, my brother and sister. That's what the number seven means. He was complete. Adam was a seven. Eve was a seven. Complete. If you remember when God created everything, it said that he rested on the seventh day, which means completion. So, when God told Adam, you're going to die, Adam died that day. It was a disconnect between him and God, but God still cared about him. When every man and every woman come into the world, every baby that you see is disconnected from God. Every boy and girl that, that come into the mother's womb, you got to understand this, brothers and sisters, you come through the, the father's bloodline. Sister Chang Chang said, I'm confused. This is what I mean. Okay, man is made out of three components. Spirit, soul, and body. You die two different ways. If you don't have a relationship with God, you are spiritually dead. Even though you walking around. When God come in, if a man or woman allow God to come into their bodies. You see, some people think that God is just sitting up there in heaven. No, he is. He's everywhere. Especially he lives inside a man and woman. Whenever a man and woman accept his son Jesus, the spirit of God moves into a man's body and a woman's body. Your body, my brother and sister, is just like a house. You live in your house, but your house is your home. A home and a house is different. Your house is a structure. Your body is a structure. When God uh, created Adam, what he did first, he got, he had some uh he got some dirt, some clay, and when he formed the clay, Adam was not animated. Adam was not animated until God blew the breath of life into him, and then when he blew his spirit into the man, that's when Adam eyes opened and he was able to move. Prior to that, Adam was just dirt, clay. That's what Adam was. But the day Adam uh, did what God told him to do, God separated himself from Adam. He came out of Adam's body. But Adam still lived. Physically, he was still living. Spiritually, he was dead. You see, when a man and a woman have the spirit of God, you're able to relate with God. 
Just like if you're in a relationship with a, a man or a woman, when you conversate and everything, you can relate with a man and woman. You can relate. You cannot relate with God unless you have his spirit in you. If you don't have God's spirit in you, you can't relate to him. Because let me tell you something, my brother. If you had God's spirit in you, you would hear him talking to you. Does he talk like I'm talking to you now? Not all the time. You will hear him on the inside because his spirit on the inside. And you will be able to, you will be able to tell it's God. If you don't, if you don't know his voice, because Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. If Jesus lived in a man and woman, you will hear him constantly throughout the day, especially when it comes to the city. You see, some people think you got a conscience, my brother and sister. Your conscience is you. You can't see your conscience. You see, your mind, your brain, your brain is not your conscience. Your brain is a little mass of muscles and stuff. That's not your, that's not your mind. That's your brain. Your mind is on the inside of your brain. Your mind thinks. Your brain don't think. Your mind does. You see, in a man and a woman, you have the soul, you have the mind, the will, and emotion. You see, you think with your mind, you make decisions with your will, you will do or you will not do. And then your emotions, you feel. That's the real man and woman. So like this, the day you die, my brother, so to like if, if any of you go to a funeral, you see a dead body. But that, that person, that man and woman that you knew came out of that body. The day they died, that's the day they left. The only thing you have is their house that they lived in, their bodies. That man, a woman that you know, big mama and big daddy, big mama and big daddy made a decision before they died. I know you all go to uh, funerals and everything. When you go to all funerals, everybody say, rest in peace. He or she well, hear everybody going to heaven. The Bible don't teach that. Every man and every woman make a decision about Jesus before you leave your body. So the day when a man and woman, leave, you know, when they give up the ghost, that's what keeping you together, your, your spirit, okay? When you die, your spirit and your soul go somewhere. Your spirit gonna go and your soul gonna go. Your soul, the real you, my brother. And the real you, my sister, is going to either hell or it's going to go to heaven with Jesus before he come back. Okay, if Jesus doesn't come back and you die today, if you did not have yourself right with Jesus, that's the best relationship you're supposed to be in. If, how you doing, Sister Lisa? If you don't have your life together with Jesus, if you don't have your relationship with Jesus, you, my brother, you, my sister, you going to go to hell. And when you go to hell, you're not going to be like Rover dead all over. You going to be conscious, just like you looking at me now and you conscious of what I'm saying and what I'm doing, right? You conscious. When you leave your body, my brother and sister, you going to be conscious. Your body is going to be in the ground. That's your temple. When Jesus told the uh, when Jesus told the Pharisees and stuff, he said, "If you destroy my temple, I will be I will bring it back up in three days." What was God, Jesus talking about? Jesus was talking about his body. They thought he was talking about that building, Solomon's building, but he was not thinking about that. Chuck just said, "What does it, it matter now? Two people met as long as God allowed their path to cross. I know God imagined where they met through people, single ministry, and, and growth." Okay, people meet, God allow people to marry. He don't force people to marry. He doesn't do that. It's a difference between God don't force, God give us all a free will. But there, there are some men and women that seek the face of God before they get married. All married people do not seek God's approval. They get together because they like each other. They said they love each other, but God gave them a free will, so they decided to do it. That don't mean God 
uh, God don't stop don't stop them from doing it. They made a decision to get married. A man and woman they uh, after God, a man and a woman see the Bible say clearly that God brought the woman to the man. When a man and woman meet, if God has something to do with it, God going to set up a situation where that man find the woman. But I'm going to touch on that shortly. God, the man going to find the woman. Because God going to God gonna fix it where they meet. Mm -hmm. That's right, uh, sister uh, Chain Chain. They will not acknowledge God. You know why they won't acknowledge God? Because they think that we got together through luck. They think we got together through circumstance. They think we got together. We got hooked up. We bumped into each other. Those type of people, did, if they don't acknowledge God, they willfully made a decision to marry on their own. God didn't have nothing to do with it. He allowed them to exercise their free will. He was not included. That's why, and they told the truth. They told the truth. Their truth was they got together, but God didn't have nothing to do with it. But a man and woman that acknowledged God, if a man and woman actually got together through God, that man and woman going to give God credit from the rip. They would say, God put us together. God put two imperfect people together. They would even say that. We are imperfect. We're a long way from perfect, but God orchestrated, and they would give an example how they met, but they include God in it. The average couple will not because God didn't put them together. Let me move right on. Breaking news. God did not put our relationship together. Single sister, back to you. Just because you see your peers or someone get married or already married doesn't mean God put them together. The man that she is marrying or have gotten married to isn't truly a leader. He's not a leader nor is he the head of the home. And we're not talking about the head. If he's a head, he's probably the head on the tax form. When people fill out the tax, that's the only head he in. He is. He's not, God don't look at him as, as the, the uh, spiritual head because if a man was in God and uh, following God, he would have the spirit of God and God would look at him. He's the spiritual leader of the relationship. Worldly men don't know nothing what I'm talking about. It'll go over their heads. Worldly women don't know, know what I'm talking about. It'll go over their head. A man of God, he is he follow after God. He allowed God to handpick that woman. She was not a perfect woman. He is not a perfect man, but God handpicked both of them to be together. But it was bigger. Then when God put them together, it's bigger than a man and woman just getting married. I'm going to get to that shortly because I'm about to get ahead of myself. Now, just because the man put his, his um, he's the head of the house on his tax form. Most men and most women, you will have a, a man. How you doing, Sister uh, Shannon? You will have a man saying, I'm the, I'm the head of the house. Yeah, on your U.S. tax form. I'm the head of the house. He misinterpret God's word. His wife misinterpret word. His wife is following a blind man. Can a blind man see? Her husband is blind. He is spiritually blind. He got eyes, but he don't have the real eyes. He doesn't have wisdom. He might be smart. He might be intellectual but he doesn't have wisdom. The average man that you see that's married, he doesn't have wisdom. He might be articulate in the way he talks. He might be smart in what he does, his vocation and all that, he, but he lacks wisdom. When a man has wisdom, he is able to see things from God's point of view. When a woman has wisdom, she is able to see things from God's point of view. What comes with wisdom? A man and a woman have to ask for wisdom. You understand? 
A man and a woman have to ask for wisdom, just like King Solomon asked God for an understanding heart. What comes with wisdom? What comes with wisdom is knowledge. God said, my, pe my people perish from a lack of knowledge. So when you have wisdom, you see what wisdom does, you have knowledge. So God would take that wisdom and he would show you how to apply the knowledge that you have, especially when it comes to marriage. So when God give a man or woman wisdom and they know how to apply the knowledge, what comes with applying the knowledge? Understanding. That man and woman understand what he, what his role and his duty, what her role and her duties in the marriage. Then you have discernment. Discernment is the ability to know right from wrong. Even though they might do wrong sometimes, but they have the ability from God to know right from wrong. You don't call it. If you make, if that man won't make a decision, they willfully make a decision to do wrong. You see, the dangerous thing about God living in you, you clearly know when you're about to do something wrong. That's the danger about being in a relationship with God. Because God's spirit talked to you, brothers, and he talked to you, sister. If you're about to do wrong, his spirit gonna talk to you, and you're gonna, you see, you think it's your conscience, but it's his spirit talking to your conscience. I mean your soul. Your soul and your mind, your will, and your emotion. So his spirit will say, don't do it. And you, and you see, these, this, I'm talking about spiritual men and women. You clearly know right from wrong. So to tell you the truth, my brother and sister, when you are married, when you're doing something, I'm talking about married people now, if you do something outside the boundaries of marriage, you willfully decide to do it. It didn't just happen. It didn't just happen. You made a decision to put yourself in a situation for it to happen. Because the Bible clearly says when, uh, when a man, and I'm paraphrasing, that when a man and woman is facing temptation, because every man and woman is going to face a temptation, even married people. Brother, if you're married, you, your, wife, your wife may look gorgeous, but you're going to see other pretty women out there. I see a whole bunch of pretty women out there. I might not be like Denzel Washington then, but I ain't no bad looking guy and I'm not arrogant, but my wife see other guys that are appealing. But you see, you have to make a decision what you're going to do. That's where discernment come in. You understand? That's where discernment. Sisters, the man that your peer, you single sister, the, the man that your peer or someone that's already married, and like I said, a lot of them just Head of household on the tag form. Yes, sister, a pan that always escape with every temptation. God always make an escape. Just like Joseph, if you all remember Joseph, you all remember Joseph. Joseph was one of the twelve, one of Israel's son. His name used to be Jacob. He was he was tempted by uh, Polybus' wife. She tried to have sex with him. He ran. He ran out of there. She got his garment and she set him up and lied. By the way, this free of charge, a lot of women, they lie on men. They said that the man, in the first case of a lying woman, not, I'm not saying all women, now, don't get me wrong, sister, I'm not saying all women. Some women lie and say that men touched them. Classic case is when Polybus' wife said that uh, Joseph tried to take her sexual. And she lied. She bald-faced lied. Caused that man to get in jail. Today, there are some women that set men up. There are some women that go to the man's house. There are some women that go to a hotel. And then come back and say that they said no. And lied about that man. There's a lot of them out right there that lie that a man touched them. Moving right along. Anyway, sisters, check this out. You have to ask yourself, when you see your peer's husband, when you see this guy that your peer dating, when you see a woman that married to a man,
hear three surefire sign. I mean, three surefire sounds, or to say it differently, fruits of a man that God is not in his life. I'm going to make three points. Then I'm going to move, brother, to you sisters, about these sisters that ain't got a, a, a inch of a, a pink, an inch of anything of God. But first, latest first, let me tell you something. He doesn't read the word of the Lord on a regular basis. Sister, the man that, some of you single sisters, the man that you're dating, you have to ask yourself this. Did, have I ever seen him read God's word? Just think about that. That's a profound, that's a profound question. Have you ever seen, some of you sisters that single now, have you ever seen that man read God's word? Just think about it. Some of you married sisters, have you ever seen your husband read the Bible? Some of you married sisters, the Bible is the most dustiest book in your house. He won't even go to worship with some of you married sisters. You go to worship, public worship. He's sitting home looking at the football game. He going to the golf course. He hanging out with the boys. He said, I'm tired. I've been working all the week. What he doesn't realize that God gave him the energy to work. You understand how you doing, Cole? God gave him the energy to work. Now he want to take off. Did God take off when he created the world? Some would say, God, God could do it. God give a man energy to do it. If God could give a man energy to take care of you, sisters, he should acknowledge God for at least one hour. Sisters, you single sisters, don't mean that you date. Ask him what type of uh, books do he read. As of tonight, ask him what type of books does he read. I guarantee you, mm -hmm. he's probably going to say no books or he's going to name some books and the Bible will not be one of them. Some of you married sister, your husband think that Adam and Eve is in Revelation, not in Genesis. You understand? They think Adam and Eve was in if, if and that and I give them credit if they said Adam and Eve was in Genesis. Hopefully they pass that test. Sisters, you why? You you single sister, you got leverage. If you dane a clown, I mean, if you dane a man right now and he's not into God's word, that's not the man for you. Don't call me. I'm going to take your money. Don't call me trying to get counseling from me. I'm giving you this free of charge. You with the wrong man. You're dating the wrong man. I'm about to get to that, Lisa. I'm glad you brought that up. As it is written in 2 Timothy verse 2, 15. As it is written in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. As it is written in 2 Timothy verse 2, I mean chapter 2, verse 15. Listen to me carefully. Don't hear me. Listen. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. It say, study to show thyself approved. How can a man know about the Lord unless he spent time reading God's word? You know about God. You don't know God. You don't know God. If God's spirit is in a man, the only way that spirit is going to cause that man to grow spiritually, he got to read God's word. If a man like to eat a hamburger, if a man like to eat a steak, why you won't eat God's word? You, that man, he's made out of spirit, soul, and body. Most men that are interested in eating and frying or going to the grill and flipping food on the grill. 
Why don't you flip that page in the Bible where it said, thus says the Lord? Why they won't flip that? Remember, when Jesus was in the wilderness, Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days. He was hungry physically. Satan knew he was hungry. Satan, the tempter, came to Jesus. Jesus, brother, I know you're hungry. You see that, you see that stone over there? Turn it to bread. What did Jesus say? It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Bam. Jesus said, it is written that man should not live by bread alone. So what does that mean? If a man, if a man can eat physical food, why he won't eat God's food in the Bible? Those words. You see, whatever a man take into his eyes, whatever he listen to, it, it affects him. There's not one man or not one woman that cannot say that thing don't affect him. Whatever you see, my brother and sister, whatever you hear, it affect you. You keep listening to it. You keep hearing it. Whatever you read, it's going to affect you. You might not think it, but you keep reading stuff, it's going to affect you. Some of you, some of these brothers, they, they like to look at pornography, right? Oh, this is going to be hot tonight. They like to look at pornography, right? So while they are looking at pornography, they got some lotion in one hand and they looking at that stuff, okay? They looking and they and with that, that lotion and stuff on their hand, you know what they're doing with the hand, right? And they looking at pornography, right? What they don't know is this. It's going to slowly grab them. It's going to slowly grab them. And then they're going to be hooked. And that's what they're going to be thinking about. I got to have sex with somebody. I got to have sex. Oh, that look good. Look how she doing that man. It ain't no love that they just meet up like animals. And you brother and sister, I have I have uh, took a peek at, peek at porn just to see what it was about. But I knew when I seen it, all I seen when I looked at that, this porn stuff, I seen a man and a woman, there's no romance at all when it comes to porn. There's no romance. Mm -hmm. There's no dialogue at all. The man move in on the woman, the woman move in, and they just go ahead and have sex. They don't even know each other. They just say, hey, how you doing? Let's get it on. They don't even be playing Marvin Gaye. They said, let's get it on. And it's just like animals. If you all look at the animal kingdom and stuff like that, what do the male animals do to the female? What do they do? Let me tell you what they do. What a male animal does, he goes behind, he go behind the female and he sniff her vagina. That's what the animals do. They go behind a female animal, sniff a vagina, and when they sniff the vagina, they get an erection, and then no nothing. They just jump on the female, do that. They, they don't even go. Animals don't even care about it. Male animals don't even care. They What they would do, they would jam the female animal in less than a minute, and then they break away. That's how some of these brothers do. They They... They just think about having sex with you. There's no attachment, no feelings, and they leave these women empty. Some of you sisters, some of you married sisters, when your husband has sex with you, do you ever feel empty? Do you ever feel like he was just there for himself and leave you hanging? And then some of you have to go get your little toys to cap yourself off. Oh, that's another conversation. That's another conversation. I leave that alone. But study thyself to be approved. Sister, you single sister, if the man you dating or whatever, if he don't study God's word, it's not going to help him. He cannot help you. 
You would be like the blind. He would be like the blind leading the blind. You would be riding in a car with a blind man. Wherever you go, it's a blind man. I don't care how good he is. I don't care how much money he got. I don't care where he take you on an exotic trip. I don't care what he does for you. He's still blind. What did God, what did Jesus say? A man, what, how did Jesus say it? And I'm paraphrasing this. When it comes to a man possession, really don't define, don't, doesn't define the man. Jesus said, what would a man give for his soul? You understand? So just because this man got all this worldly stuff, sister, that's not a man. He's a man boy. He's a flesh boy. He's not a spiritual brother. So I'm telling you this, sister, listen to me carefully. If you're dating a man and he not, and, and uh, you got an advantage, if he don't read the word of God, he is spiritual dead. He don't have no contact with the Lord. And those of you that are married, if you've never seen your husband read the Bible, and the only time you hear him say Jesus' name is when he having sex with you. Oh, Lord. That's the only thing some of you sisters know. That man, he's supposed to be the head and leader of your home. He's not the head and leader of your home. He doesn't like, he doesn't love the Lord. He say that he loves the Lord, but his fruits show that he's not into the Lord. He appear to be a good citizen, right? He appear to be an outstanding man, but he's spiritually dead. When, let me tell you this, when a man understands the three levels of growing in love with a woman, you see, a man has to love a woman three on three levels. He has to love that woman spiritually. He has to love that woman's soul, her mind, her will, emotions, and her body. He don't love her body and then a soul and spirit. Most men think about the woman's body. They don't even think about her soul. They think about your body. Most men think about your body. Some of you single sisters, some of you married sisters, you know I'm telling the truth. He only think about your body. He don't care nothing about what you think. He don't care nothing about what you, what you want to do and what you don't want to do. He don't care about your emotions. You see, a man that is spiritual driven, he's going to be thinking about the Lord first, you second. He will even tell you, sister, he will say, my first priority is God. Some of you married sister, your husband never told you that. He never told you that. Second priority is you, sister. Most of you married, sister, you are the first priority on your man's list. You don't supposed to be the first choice of your husband. God's supposed to be the first choice of your husband. If your husband puts you on a pedestal, whatever Jesus allowed to go down, let it go down. Because Jesus is going to be up in heaven eating some of Sister Flo popcorn, mm -hmm. looking at you fall. And then you're going to walk around scratching your head, wondering where did I go wrong? You're going to be calling me. You're going to be coming to your in my inbox. And I'm going to charge you because that's my time. You're going to come to my inbox because this is what I'm telling you tonight. This free of charge. But how can a man know the Lord unless he study his word? When the man understands the three levels, he will grow in love with his wife. He will pattern his love as the Lord loved the church. For example, this man have a spiritual base. This man know who he is, why he's here, and where he's going. He know who he is. He knows that he's a son of God. And he talk about his fleshly father. Because Jesus had two fathers. He had the original father, God, and he had Joseph. Joseph was his physical father, but God was his, well, I put it this way, Joseph was Jesus' stepfather. God was Jesus' original father. Sister, your man father supposed to be God. God used his fleshly father to get him here. But when a man come to God, God is his father. My father, fleshly father, name was Johnny M. Tumor. He's deceased now. His body is in the ground. My real father, God, his body is not in the ground. His body is up in heaven. Jesus. Jesus is my Lord 
and Jesus is my brother. God is the father. Jesus is my Lord and he's my brother. David said, the Lord said to my Lord. So what was David saying? David was saying this. David was saying that he would talk about Jesus and he would talk about Jesus' father, God. When Jesus talked to his disciples, Jesus told them to refer to his father as his father as their father. Remember when Jesus taught them how to pray, what did Jesus say? What did Jesus say? Thy father who art in heaven. When they asked Jesus how to pray, he said, this is what you do. Thy father, which the 23rd song, okay? That's what Jesus said. So Jesus, when you come to Jesus, you got the only way you could get to God the Father, you got to go through his son, Jesus. For those of you that think you go through other people, you got some foolish people out here that's saying you can get to God anyway. You can get to heaven any kind of way. Jesus said, or uh, brought it the way that lead to destruction, hell, and narrow is the way that lead to life. God, you got to go through Jesus to get to life. Now, if a man is spiritual, this man, he's going to naturally have shelter for the woman. He's going to naturally provide for the woman and he's going to protect. Worldly men could provide shelter. Worldly men could provide protection. Worldly men can protect, but they're not there for who you really are, sisters. You understand? He's not there for who you are. This man don't love your soul. He don't love your spirit. First of all, he don't love your spirit because he's not seeking God. He might like your soul a little bit. Most of me and sister, I can tell you this. Ask your, most of you sister right now, those of you single sister, ask your man what the soul mean. He's probably going to say something like, you mean soul music, soul food? Now I say, what does the soul mean? Most worldly men don't know what the soul is. The soul is the mind, the will, and emotion. Most men don't know that. And then if he look up and say, uh, that ask him what happens when Jesus come into his life. Ask him what Jesus is. Ask him if Jesus up in heaven or is Jesus in his body and see what he say. Ask him, where is Jesus? You see, Jesus is everywhere, especially those that are saved. Jesus will live inside of you. Jesus resides in imperfect men and imperfect women. Number two, he doesn't talk to his wife about the Lord. Sister, single sister, does this man ever talk to you about God? He ain't got to talk about God all the time, 24 7 of the way. Does he talk to you about the Lord? Does he answer that question? Have you seen him reading God's word? No. That's the first it. Have you ever taught you married sister? Have your man talked to you about the Lord? Besides y'all having sex and he said, oh Lord, then. Have he talked to you about the Lord? As it is written in 1 Corinthians 11, 1. As it is written in 1 Corinthians 11, 1. As it is written in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 11, 1. It says this. Be ye followers of me, even as I am of Christ. Paul said that a man should be able to say to his wife, follow me as I follow Christ. Mary, sister, which one of you, which one of you have ever told your husband, you Mary, sister, which one of you have told your husband verbally that I follow you? Which one? Which one of you, the only way a woman will follow you is she got the spirit of the Lord. Even if she married the wrong man. The reason, let some of these brothers out there that don't follow the Lord when his, when his woman go to worship service and he at home, but he said, I'll see you later. But brother, some of you, you brother that you let your wife go to worship service, you supposed to be taking your wife to uh, work. Now, the women, there are some women 
that have the law in them and they follow these worldly men because they messed up and got married. So they know what they have to do. But some of you married sisters that married the wrong man, let me tell you what, you can win him to Christ. The Bible tells you how to do it because he's going to be observing you. He might not say nothing, but some of you sisters, that's a possibility that you can get your husband to uh, come to Christ. But you can't tell him, you can't tell him, I want you to follow Jesus. You can't be doing that. You can't bully a man. Men, the, most men, aren't. They, they're not going to follow you, sisters. You got to have wisdom. You got to know how to keep your mouth closed. Don't fuss at him. Because he's going to be listening to you and he's going to be watching you. And based on how you do, the Lord can use you to win your husband over. And you see, Sister Lisa said, he found me and my cousin come said, me. You see, she following her husband. You see what I'm saying? Now, he isn't a leader, nor is he the head of the home. Even if he paid the bills, he spent time with his wife and he give her worldly goods. Remember, Satan offered Jesus the world. Satan offered Jesus the world. I'm not saying some of you married sister, your, your uh, husband, Satan, but Satan offered Jesus the world. Number three, he doesn't think about his wife's eternal future. Even if he paid the life policy, he set her up to get a retirement if he croak over and die, and he has set her up for the natural life, but he doesn't express concern about his wife's soul beyond this life. Married sisters, if your husband really concerned about you, not only will he make sure that the life policy is there if he die before you, not only will he set up his retirement and stuff and think about you or, or to take care of you physically, this man will be uh, entrenched and interested in your soul. Because that man wants you, if he goes, he want to meet you in glory. He will talk to you about your soul. That's the most precious thing that you have, sister, your soul. He will talk to you about your soul because he loved your, he loved the spirit of the Lord in you. He loved you as a woman on the inside because as you grow older, sister, that outside is going to decline. Like as he get older, his outside is going to be a uh, decline. But if you're in the Lord, and he's reading God's word, he's taking up, his soul going to be renewed daily. And by him talking to you, it's going to be, you going to be rejuvenated. Now, you brothers. Now, let me talk to you single brothers too. Okay, let me talk to you. Just because you, are, you aren't married, but your guy friend or your boy is getting married, doesn't mean she has a relationship with the Lord. Here are three surefire signs that she's a different type of fruit. Number one, she doesn't come into a relationship knowing, knowing to respect you as a husband. She doesn't respect you. What do you mean, Tony? She doesn't respect her husband. As it is written, at Genesis 3.16, as it is written in Genesis uh, 3.16, as it is written in uh, Genesis 3.16, uh, God said, then he said to the woman, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy, and in pain you will give birth. Let me stop right there. Some of you sisters that have had children, you know what God is talking about. You're going to have pain in your pregnancy and in birth. Now, this is the part about respect. And you, will, and you will desire to control your husband. This is what God telling Eve, and it passed down to all women, the flesh women. It said, you will desire to control your husband. But he will rule over you. You will 
will desire to control your husband, but he will rule over you. Cinderella and I talked about this today. I asked Cinderella, I read this passage to her and I got her feedback. This is what Cinderella told me. Cinderella said that women in general will attempt to control everything, including her husband, if he allowed to. Meaning that he's a simp. He doesn't have a backbone. Why did God tell Eve that? Why did he say, you're going to have a desire to control your husband? But nay. How you doing, Brother Demetrius? Cinderella, you know who Cinderella is, Demetrius. You know, you talk to her. But anyway, he trying to be funny, you all. But anyway, I, I'll meet you later, son. But anyway, a woman that control her husband, he is a simp. Some of these type of women will think they are the head of the relationship. Question, have you ever seen a woman, brothers and sisters, that leads prayers to God when her husband is the head of the home? Have you ever seen this before? It ain't nothing wrong with a woman praying for her husband. But have you ever noticed there are these certain type of women that likes to lead a prayer over the home. Like to lead prayers over food. That's the man's role. You understand? Let me tell you something, sister. There are some, of you, some sisters, and some of you brothers and sisters know what I'm talking about. Just answer the question. Have you ever seen a woman that thinks she is in charge? Have you ever seen a woman that thinks she's in charge? You see, the thing about it, the man's supposed to be the head and the leader of the home. Anytime you see a woman leading prayers over her husband, that is inappropriate. These type of women want to appear to be feminine, but they radiate masculine energy. The strong woman. A woman don't have to go around saying she's a strong woman. A strong woman don't have to go around saying nothing. The most strongest woman is a feminine woman. One that's feminine. That's power. A woman that wants to act. That's masculine. That's a freak. Two people. It ain't but one head in the house. That's the man supposed to be. Case in point. If you have a woman that's trying to be the head. and I'm going to gonna piss some sisters off. There are some women that make more money than men. And just because they make more money than men, they think they call the shot in the house. That's right. There's some of them. There's some of you listening to me tonight. You make more money than your husband. And you think because you make more money than the husband, you run the household. You don't run the household. You know why you don't run the household? Because I'm about to get to that. Number two, she had to be willing to clearly understand her role to her husband as to help me. She was not created to serve the man, but she was supposed to serve with the man. As it is written in 1 Corinthians 11, 9. 1 Corinthians 11, 9. 1 Corinthians 11, 9. 1 Corinthians 11, 9. It clearly say Paul writing to the Corinthians. And the man was not made for the woman. You all know I always say that. But the woman was made for the man. Help me. When God made Adam, God said it was a it was a it was a, a conversation in heaven. God said, it's not good for man to be alone. There are some brothers out there on on uh social on uh YouTube and all that, they be saying. 
I don't need no woman. I'm going monk. Then you got some brothers out there, they just see a woman as, I want a woman to be able to cook, clean the house, wash the clothes, wash the children, feed me, shut up, and give me some sex. That's how some men see a woman. A woman was not made for those particular things. Those part of it, but she was made for greater things. A woman is to help meet. Sisters, no man was created for you. Do you hear me? No man was created for you. No man don't supposed to be running after you. No man don't supposed to be chasing you. No man don't supposed to be paying stuff for you unless you're his wife. And he still don't run after his wife. The Bible said, and the man was not, 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 not made for the woman, but the woman was made for the man. She was made to assist the man. This comes to number three. She doesn't understand what it is to be a Proverbs 31 woman, not a perfect woman. How to carry herself. A Proverbs 31 woman is not a perfect woman. She's not a flawless woman. She has flaws just like the man does, but it's about character. Yes, she made some mistakes in her past, like the man made mistakes. But when God got, when God saw Jesus came into that woman's life, Jesus is in that woman's body. Jesus is uh, molding that woman to be a virtuous woman. I got lived, I could go over the Proverbs thirty one, but that's a long, that's a long thing in itself. But but what I did. I went to this site called a virtuouswoman.org, a virtuouswoman.org. And these are some parts of a virtuous woman. And God got to be in this woman's life to be a virtuous woman, okay? Here it goes. Faith. She has, number one, she loved Jesus with all her heart. Totally. Number one, a virtuous woman loved God with all her heart. She loved God before her children. Then her husband. Because a lot of women, they like the children first. Then their husband. Did I step on anybody's toes? Did I? Do you want me to apologize? I ain't apologizing to you what I just said. She had faith and she loved Jesus with all her heart. Number two. Marriage. She is a faithful bride. Does that mean she won't follow her faith? Yes, she will, like he will. But she is a faith. She faith he can depend on her. I didn't say trust her one hundred percent. I said depend on her. You see, the Bible clearly say you all know what I, I I think about that, and I have told you that verse over and over again, right? About it's in the Old Testament. About it say, don't trust your friend. And it's Malka 7, I think, verse 5. You all can check it out. I think it's Malka, I think, uh, chapter 7, verse 5. I think that's where it's at in the Old Testament. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I know some of you will. But it's in the Old Testament. It said, don't trust your best friend. Do any of you all have a best friend? Do you all have a best friend that you trust 100%? It also said, don't trust her that lie in your bosom. What that mean? Don't tell her all your, don't tell her everything, brothers. If you up there and your wife laying on your chest and you want to have a pillow talk, you better not tell her everything. Don't tell her everything. The Bible clearly say, you see, some of you are saying Tony saying this. Yep, Tony is just reporting the news. I work for station G-O-D, not F-O-X, not C-N-N, not NBC. I'm on a station called G-O-D. The Bible clearly say, don't trust your best friend. Who is, who is your best friend, brothers and sisters? Who is your best friend? You better not trust that person 100%. Also, sisters, you better be careful too by trusting your husband 100%. Do I trust Cinderella 100%? Do Cinderella trust me 100%? Does Cinderella trust me 100%? She better not. 
Do I trust Cinderella 100%? I do not. No, I don't trust her 100%. She don't trust me 100%. I trust God 100%. She trusts God 100%. But I have a high level of trust for her. She have a high level of trust for me, but not 100%. I tell you what, brother, you put that woman on a pedestal and trust her 100% and see what happens. If she does suck, you're going to want to divorce her quick and in a hurry because you put on a pedestal. Sister, don't put no man on no pedestal. Sister and brother, don't put no man or woman on a pedestal. Only Jesus is on the pedestal. If you're married, some of you single, so you got to understand the order. It's God first. It says God is the head of Christ. Christ is the head of man. And man is the head of the woman. That's the order. Now, if you got a woman that's that want to be aggressive and stuff like that. She got the masculine energy. So you're going to bump head. If you have a man that got masculine energy and you got a woman that's supposed to be feminine, but she got the masculine, you're going to clash. It's just like this. Two heads belong in a freak show. What do I mean? If you see a person walking at the mall and they got two heads on their body, you're going to look, you're going to turn around and look. Because it's not natural. You understand? If you see two heads on a body, it's not natural. Those type of people, they're more than likely make money from the fair or the circus. If you see two if you see a person on the internet that got two heads, you're gonna look at them because it's not no everyday thing. That's how some households are when you have a woman and a man, she wanna be the head. And he know the head. So they're gonna clash. You see, when it comes to a relationship, you got to have the masculine, very masculine, alpha, and then you have the feminine. So you have the yin and the yang. Let me go on with this. The virtuous woman, she's uh, she's mothering. She loves being a mother, and her children call her blessed. A good mama, her children are going to love her to death. They going to talk about their mom. They going to also talk about their daddy. If he's a good garden man, they'll talk about him. And then that's another story I can get out of that. But she could, she's going to be a loving mother. Another point, healthy. She take care of her, her mind. She take care of her body and her spiritual health. So first of all, let me rephrase that. She taking care of herself uh, spiritual first mentally and physical. So she's about health. She's a healthy woman. Spiritual, she's going to feed on the word of the Lord. She's going to make sure good, clean things come into her mind and she's going to make sure she clean. What do I mean by clean? She's going to make sure her body is clean. She's going to smell fresh. Fresh. Service. She served others with love and kindness. Have you ever seen these type of women? They are, they think about other people, even strangers. They have this feeling where they want to help people that they don't know. This is what a woman, she serves a lot. These type of women, some of you have seen them. Like if it's be a gathering at the house, she will make sure everybody is taken care of before she does something. You ever seen no type of women? I have seen quite a bit of them. I got some of my family that they make sure every, especially like if you have a little family gathering and stuff, they cook all these good food and stuff and they make sure everybody is taken care of. When it comes to a wife, if a wife, now this is could be a little controversial. If it's a wife, and she got children, and she got a husband. I have said it before. Some of you have heard it, and some of you, this is your first time, and some of you may not agree with it. Who eat first? Does the husband eat first or the children? Who eat first at the table? Who eat first? The husband or the children? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Who eat first? Who eat the piece of the chicken first? Does the husband eat the chicken first, supposed to eat the chicken first, or the children? 
Come on now, I know some of y'all, some of you, you scared to answer that question. Who eat first? The husband? Sister Pat said the children, I mean the husband. Anybody else got something to say? Who eat first at the table? The husband or the children? Sister Pat said the husband. Anybody else got something? The husband should bless the food and eat first. Sister Lisa said the husband. Anybody else think that the children should eat first? Anybody? Before I get on with this topic, anybody? Let me tell you something. Sister Flo said the children. Let me tell you something. Listen to me carefully. Don't hear me. Listen to me carefully. Remember the order. Remember the order. The order is when it comes to a relationship, <laughs> when it comes to a relationship, God come before the man and the woman. Let's make that clear. God come before the man and the woman. Secondly, after the Lord, after the Lord, the husband priority is supposed to be the wife first, her needs first. The wife, after her relationship with God, is supposed to be her husband needs secondly. The children come after the uh, husband. I know that's something tough to grasp, but that's the order. Now, let me tell you, I just told you all this before. When my, when my father was living, we ate. I ate. Renee ate, Teresa ate, Lara ate. My sister, me, my two sisters, Renee and Teresa, and my brother, Lara, we all ate. But my daddy got the big piece of the chicken. Point is, we all ate. My mother understood the order. She knew that we were going to eat first. My daddy, he was the leader. He was the provider and the protector. Think of it this way. <coughs> Who come first, sister or brother? Does Jesus come before your husband and wife? Does Jesus come before your husband and your wife? The Bible clearly say that God is the head of Christ. The Bible say that Christ is the head of the man. And then the, the, and the, and the man is the head of the woman. The children come after the husband. That's right. The children come after her. They're still going to eat. Now, if now if the children, if they were struggling with the food, naturally the dad would probably say, let the children eat. He would take the hit. The dad would probably say, let the children eat. The dad would probably say, you eat too, honey, first. Because the man is the head and the leader. Understand that. You understand? So, a man and a woman follow Christ. If the man godly, his wife follow him. And I have told you this, this before. I just put this insert. I told you all this, and I say it several times. I'll say it again. My wife, she told me she would follow me. Not all men have heard those words come out of a woman's mouth. When I first met my wife, a short period of time, we got married in three months. She said, she called me. She said, Tony, I want to follow you. No other woman ever told me that who I have dated in my life. My wife told me that she told an imperfect man that. She told a man that had a sinful life. 
She told a man that ran women before I met her. She told this type of man, me, that she would follow me. You understand? She knew I was imperfect, but one thing she knew, I was following the Lord. So the Lord had to work on me. And by the time I met her, he had worked on me quite a bit. Do I still make errors? Do I still make mistakes? I fall sometimes in different areas of my life. Like she falls sometimes in different areas of life. But she told me she would follow me. Okay. Back to the big piece of chicken. My dad ate the big piece of chicken. He, he used to like the breasts. My sisters and my brother and me, me myself personally, I wanted this to taste that breast because it had it seemed like it had the most meat on it. But you had the thigh and all the other part. I want it, but my son said don't don't say nothing to your dad about that. Hey Renee, if you're looking at this, Renee, I thought I seen you earlier, my sister Renee. Renee, did you want a part of that big piece of chicken? And you kept it to yourself. Renee, you on that? Did you want the big piece of the chicken? But anyway, when we got big enough, we were able to get the big piece of chicken on our own, okay? But my point is, the man come before the children. And if the if it's deemed the dad and mama know how to work things around, okay? Because you got to understand, it's a baby and all that kind of stuff. We already know about all that kind of stuff. We know it. No, another thing, stewardship. She is a wise steward of the gift God have given her. What does that mean? She know how to spend the money wisely. That's it. She know how to spend money wisely, not foolishly. She know not to get in debt and put the and put her husband in a situation. She knows that she don't skim the money. Without her and her husband talking about it. She don't, she don't do that little sneaky stuff with the money. She know how to handle money responsible. She's industrious. She works with a willing hand. She's not a lazy woman. She don't sit around all the time filing her fingernails. Do you all think that Eve sat around on the law filing her fingernail? No. God gave Adam and Eve a, a dual responsibility before they sinned. God said, I want you all to reproduce and I want you to have dominion over my creation. He gave them both dual responsibility. Adam had some work to do. Eve had some work to do. They were supposed to work collectively together. That's why she was a helpmeet. Homemaker, she is good at managing her home. She know how to manage the home. She know, I could tell you this. I could tell you this. You could tell when a woman live in a house with a man. You could really tell, most of the time, you could tell a woman touch in a home. Some of you single brother, when you start dating a woman and she come to your, your quarters, a woman that really into you, she gonna come around and she gonna start having ideas how she can make your environment look better. That's how women are. Women make the home good as far as the decorations and stuff like that. But the brother, you set the temperature in the relationship because of your leadership. Time, she spent her time on that which is good. She don't hang out in the clothes a lot of time twerking. She don't get on Facebook showing her breasts. She don't get on Facebook opening her legs. She think about God. She think about she represent her husband. She is careful what she do in public. She don't want her business out all in the streets. Beautiful. She is creative and embrace beauty and godliness. She care about her character more than her reputation. You see, if she got character, she going it's going to radiate, and she's gonna have a reputation. 
if she have a, a, a relationship with God. Now, my brother and sister, God placing man and woman together when the man and woman knows their purpose and the Lord's will for both of their lives, which is bigger than their marriage itself. Now, I'm going to briefly expound. I'll explain this to you, what I am referring to. What am I referring to? Brothers and sisters, when a man and woman get married, it's bigger. I have said it before. It's bigger than I love you. You love me. What you bring to the table, what you bring to the table. Uh-uh. It's bigger than that. The, when a man and woman get together, that father and the Lord, that man and woman thinking about what can we do for the world, for the public to help other, other men, other women, the world. What can we do? Are we here about me, myself, and I? Let me give you a, a case in point. Facebook. Facebook. Social media. Listen to what I'm about to say. Most of the time when you see a man and woman on social media or even in public on TV or whatever, have you noticed that most of the time it be about me and my family? When you see people on TV, they always talk about me and my family. When you see them on Facebook or social media, look at me and my family. They never say nothing to help other people. They don't never say nothing to encourage other people. It's all about look at us. We have arrived. We have, we have the American dream. Just look at us. We got the American dream. Don't you want to be like us? No, I don't want to be like you. Tell me something. Tell me, encourage, encourage me. Tell me something to lift me up. Tell me something about Jesus. I don't want to hear about you, you and your wife all the time. I don't want to hear about you and your husband all the time. I don't want to hear about you and your children. I don't want to hear about me, myself, and I all the time. Tell me something that's going to help other people. Tell me something that will help me. I will tell you something that will help you if I see a need. I will ask you a question. Did you take care of that? Because I'm thinking about you. Some of my male friends, some of my female friends, they know I have asked them certain questions. If, some, if they going through something or something they're dealing with, I would say something like, have you took care of that? Don't you need to take care of that? Because I'm thinking about them. It's more than Cinderella and me. I'm thinking about my, my uh, friends. I'm not on my family, but my friends. Because they're part of me. I love my family. I love my friends. My wife love her family. She love her friend, but most of all, we love God. That's why we got this couple ministry. It's bigger than us. You understand? I, this thing is bigger than us. She is in the background. You don't see. You will see her on pictures with me and stuff. She's in the background. What do I mean by the background? She reads over a lot of my material. She give me suggestion what I should do. So when you see me, it's more, you see, Jesus helped me through her. Some of the stuff I talk about, Jesus helped me through my wife because she come up with some good suggestion. So anytime you see some of the stuff I talk about, she tell me, she give me, she'll give me the thought and say, yeah, you, oh, you need to change that, change it. She tells me stuff. She walked by me, but she, she uh, stay in the background. Like right now, it's 9.08, it's 9.08 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. She been in the bed ever since 5 o'clock. She, Cause she get up early in the morning about 3 o'clock. So she knocked out. She is totally knocked out. Her mouth. She knocked out. But anyway, brothers and sisters, if God put you together, you will have fruits. People will know it's something different about you. People will compliment you. They will say more than how you your appearance is. They will tell you stuff about your character, whether they like you or not. Some people, let me tell you this, my brother and sister, if God put you together, there are going to be some people that are going to be envious of your relationship. There are going to be some people that are jealous of your relationship. 
They're going to think your relationship too good to be true. But what they, they don't know is you, a man and a woman that fall and cry, they're still going to have some issues in their relationship every now and then. A man and a woman that follow God, that don't mean that you eliminate from storm. You're going to have storm. You're going to have temptation, but you can overcome all of them. And I can tell you this, when, when a man and woman follow the Lord, they're going to have more sunshine day than rainy day. But you're going to have sunshine day and rainy days in a relationship. They are not no one perfect husband. They are not no one perfect woman, but they balance each other off. And they following the Lord. And they thinking about other people. It's not about me. You see, me, my wife and I, when she doing her thing <clears throat> and I do my thing. And we're not lifting ourselves up on no, no pedestal, nothing like that. But we know that our relationship is bigger than us. We are married, but it's more than I love you and you love me. Our relationship is bigger than that. Our relationship that God put together is about him first and his will to get people to live a lifestyle where people can say, I want that. What they really want is not the lifestyle of a married man or woman. It's they see that. That man and woman got something special in their relationship. It's bigger than their love for one another because they got Christ in their relationship. That's what people see. That's what you want your single brother and your single sister. If you get married to someone, you want people to come and say, I want what you all have. Because they see something particular about you. I want what you got. And the only thing we could give you is Christ himself. If you all remember that story in the Bible where um, Peter and John, they was walking, they were about to go into the temple, right? And there was this beggar that was at the door and he was looking for some money, right? What did Peter them tell him? They said, look at us. We don't have no money and stuff, but what we have, we're going to give it to you. And Peter said, in Jesus name, get up and walk. You see, Peter gave that man something more than money. You understand? That man, that man was able to walk. He wasn't walking before that. He was just looking for money. He was just there to get some money. But now Peter then helped him to get on his feet so he could do something for himself. And it's just like this illustration. You see, and you all have heard it before. I'm not the originator of it, but... When you go, when you take somebody to go fish, you teach them how to fish. You just don't fish and give it to them. You show them how to fish. So are you helping them? You're not just going fishing and feeding them a fish sandwich. You're teaching them how to fish so they can survive. I know that was a long lesson. I had prepared you all for it, but I love you brothers. I love you, sister. God don't put all marriages together. He put some marriage together, but not all. I have told you some point, brothers. I have told you some point, sister. Just because they look good, got the American dream, they could be dead. The walking dead, God is not there. But if a man and woman, if God put them together, that man and woman will acknowledge God put us together. They might say, we meant this way or that way, but God put us together. I hope this could help some of you brothers. I hope this could help some of you sisters, okay? I love you, brother. I love you, sister. Thank you so much for giving me your time because you didn't have to do it. But you decided to be with your brother, Tony. Peace out.